A poem by Elizabeth Bishop. <laughs> One art. The art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost, that their loss is no disaster. Lose something every day, except the fluster of lost door keys, the hour of bad respect. The art of losing isn't hard to master. I have a pen. I want to remember that thought. <laughs> now, the pen lives in my inside left pocket. My wallet in the credenza, top right drawer, when it's not in my front right trouser pocket. It's up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> The shallow creek, where I jumped as light and long-legged as a water cricket across the rocks, holds my childhood memories in its sandy bottom. That creek was wide. The June day, my cousins hunted down a large snapping turtle. My dad said they live almost 50 years. Okay? They're predators and loners left to fend for themselves. I remember Dad's stories of tadpoles, frogs, and the vast distances our creek water traveled before and after it sparkled through our little stretch of land. <clears throat> the snapping turtle eggs are left in the sandy creek bottom to hatch on their own. Many don't survive. Some lumber about for decades. I imagine these creatures only know to attack and devour without ever looking into another's eyes. The turtle they snuck up on that June morning was probably three times their age. Twelve-year-old boys don't think about age and lifetimes. He can't tell you how his cousins caught the big turtle. He can't remember them dragging him to the back porch after they slaughtered it at the creek bank. He will never forget the way his cousins deftly tied a rope around its wrinkled neck. He handed them the thick braided jute and watched as with one swift blow they chopped off its puny head. He had no power to stop the cruel cousins. The earliest memory of how precious the smallest life could be happened one spring morning in the bedroom when he opened an old velvet ring box to discover a ladybug he had saved there. It breathed the bigger air and <clears throat> fluttered toward the open window. Sorry that he captured the bug, he was grateful to witness its resurrection. <laughs> Since that time, his velvet boxes, secret drawers, and decorative dishes have collected all manner of fossils to remind him of decaying moments. When the turtle's blood spurted, I didn't flinch or turn away. I watched the eyes of the gourd-shaped head as it stared at a distant point I could not see. The turtle didn't bleed much. Its severed body relaxed out of its shell. Its four limbs were flaccid, meaty blubber sticking to the porch floorboards. I stood silent and scanned the trail of damaged grass from the back porch down to the creek. I felt a cool summer gust and wondered if murder had sent the chill. One art. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster, some realms I owned, two rivers, a continent. I missed them, but it wasn't a disaster. The cousins, the creek, 
Danny and Tommy were rough and tumble kids. He assumed that he was supposed to keep up with them, so he rode his bike over to their house on summer mornings to try on antics and rough housing. Maybe he hoped to glean something from them that would make him more like other boys. He preferred to play house with his girlfriend who lived next door. He still keeps one of her Barbie doll shoes in a footed dish with some smooth rocks and a skate. Dad always looked a little weary when his son strolled home wearing a headscarf. <laughs> On a random day in June, the warm morning sun was little consolation to the strained voice on the phone. Danny called. My mother is in intensive care at St. Francis Hospital. We've been with her day and night. How did you do it, my mother? A pause. I cannot bear this. Didn't know if you'd want to see her. A winced sigh. Tommy's on a plane from Iraq now. I hope she holds on for it. Kenny arrived at the hospital within the hour, toting roast beef sandwiches, chips, and sodas. His cousin's children stood melting into the walls of the small isolated room, where Aunt Helen lay motionless in a metal bed, with only a few tubes connecting her to this life. He looked across the faces of his cousin Danny, his children. Each had the same dazed expression, their eyes swollen and leaking. He could still hear his aunt shouting at him soon after his grandmother, her mother, had died. Get out of the way, you cocksucker! <laughs> With a desperate glance that said, do something, Danny took a step back. And Kenny took his place at Aunt Helen's bedside. Hello, Aunt Helen, it's Kenny. He grasped her heavy, limp hand and looked into her clouded green eyes that were staring at a distant point he could not see. You are waiting patiently, aren't you? I think the angels are ready to carry you. No effort. You rest. Let them take you. You know, when he was dying, Dad kept wrenching and flexing his hand. I'd say, Pop, are you walking up the mountain? <laughs> Unlike Dad, she's calm. <laughs> you let the angels do the work. Float on up. I'll go down and wait for Tommy. I brought you roast beef on bakery rolls. At the hospital entrance, he no sooner lit a cigarette when Danny walked through the large glass doors and stoically said, she's passed. They stepped back from one another. I know, he said. Go wash your face. I'll wait here for Tommy. On the fourth Sunday in June, they moved a small cruel sofa and Helen's cherished cherry tables, a special curiel and her mother's crystal into the U-Haul. It rained all day. On the side lawn that wet morning, he pointed at an old snapping turtle lumbering toward the front of the house. Leave it alone, you'll piss it off, they all said. He figured that disconnected clan of turtles had long since left the neighborhood. He stood frozen, watching the massive old turtle stretch its neck and tilt its perplexed head. He saw his aunt's small head and deep eyes full Danny died last October. Liver failure, no autopsy. Even losing you, the joking voice, a gesture I love. I shan't lie. It's evident. The art of losing, not too hard to master. Though it may look like right 